But ICICI Lombard is in focus after their Q1 earnings. The premium growth was in line with estimates, while the profits was below expectations, although their motor own damage loss ratio has improved sequentially. So let's start with that. Gopal Balachandra, the Chief Financial Officer and the Chief Risk Officer at ICICI Lombard is with us. Uh, Gopal, thanks a lot for joining in. Your loss ratio in the motor OD segment has definitely improved this time. Can you tell us what are the kind of pricing trends that you're seeing in the motor segment and what is the outlook for the full year? Yeah, so good morning, Shonia, and that's a uh, that's a great question. Uh, so honestly, if you ask us, uh, motor definitely is a preferred segment for us, and uh, that's been one of the competitive segment uh, where the market has been very very aggressive, uh, particularly since the last uh, couple of years. We are seeing some early signs of green shoots play out for the market. When you look at, let's say, for example, the combined ratios that's available for the overall market for the last year, which is FI23. The first half combined for the industry was 124. The second half combined improved to about 118. Uh, this is for the overall market. So this, while the combined issue still continues to remain elevated, from our standpoint, I think we have been a bit guarded in, in kind of driving the motor book. But having said that, I think we are kind of putting uh, across board in terms of small amount of price increases in some of the select segments of uh, vehicles. Equally, we are kind of putting a lot of emphasis in so far as uh, claim service is concerned. And that's the reason why you find the loss ratios within our acceptable range for ICC Lombard. But having said that, I would always urge that uh, it is better to look at numbers more on annual basis rather than looking at on a quarter on quarter uh, cycle. Hmm. Mr. Balachandran, hi, good morning, uh, Prashant here. Uh, I'll come back to some of what you said, but just a here and now kind of question. Uh, the top of mind question for many is, what is the uh, sort of risk of rise in claims because of the flooding that we've seen, sir, uh, for a general insurer like you? Could you put some some estimate? I'm sure that you would have uh, you would have some idea if you can uh, tell us in the ballpark. No, no, absolutely. Good morning, Prashant. Uh, so I think uh, as a part of the Q1 numbers, if you would have seen, we had let's say the cyclone Bipper Joy, which had an impact. Uh, we had roughly about 380 claims uh, on account of that particular event. The net impact of those claims, which was there in our PNL, is close to about 35 crores. The good news is what I was kind of referring to. I think if, as a company from an ICC Lombard standpoint, we have always kind of focused a lot on claim service. So of the claims that have already got reported for Cyclone before Joy, almost more than 70% of those claims have already been settled. So hence, there is a continued thrust and focus on uh, making Mr. sure I was talking about I was talking about the claim, the flooding impact now. I mean, in I'm the coming north, to that as well. in, in the second quarter, which will come up in second quarter, I'm assuming. Go on. I'm coming to that as well. I think so. One is the event that we have seen for Cyclone before Joy in Q1. Q2, I think early trends, I think still the claims are kind of trickling in. Uh, as of now, the number of claims that we have seen is exactly on the same count as what we had seen for Cyclone before Joy, which is roughly at about 350, 360 claims. But again, early days, we honestly will have to wait for a few more uh, days to kind of play out as and when the claims will start kind of trickling in. Uh, as of now, the kind of impact that we are seeing on the net is not a significant uh, uh, quantum. But honestly, we will wait for further clarity to emerge once we see maybe over the next, I would say, a week or two, when we will start seeing more number of claims getting reported. All right. Uh, hi, good morning, Gopal. Uh, you know, on health, retail health has grown by close to around 20%, which is pretty good. How much of that was price led? So, Nigel, again, good morning. Uh, so, for us, uh, it's a combination of both. Uh, we did a price increase on the renewal book uh, of almost about 19%. This was in February 23. Uh, the other part is, I think, on retail health as a segment is, a, some, is where we have been kind of looking at uh, making continued investments in adding more headcount, which is our own employees who are, who are kind of working on the health agency distribution, who in turn kind of look out for more number of agents to be added. So it's been a combination of both. As I said, on the renewal book, we had affected a price increase of almost about 19%. That, that's in February. And uh, two, the growth is also aided by the increased investments that we have been doing on building that particular segment both of which has led to an improvement in the overall growth of that particular segment, which is better than the industry growth of 18%. So earlier, I think you had mentioned that you're looking at a premium growth in excess of 15% for FY24. Uh, do you stay, are you, you know, on track to achieve that or have you changed your guidance in any way? So Sonia, honestly, I think if you look at, uh, let's say, uh, in general, the thought process for us is uh, we have all we have got all the levers which will kind of aid to drive growth, whether you see distribution, investment in technology and claim service. 
Our thought process always has been that uh, through these levers, we would want to kind of continue to outgrow the market, which is what we have seen in the first quarter of this year. We have had an outperformance of almost close to 100, 100 basis points. The similar kind of a thought process is what we have even for the rest of the year. Uh, because the market clearly presents an opportunity across segments, whether you look at motor, health, or commercial lines. And therefore, we are rightly positioned to capture this opportunity. So the way we would look for is to try and see if we can have, continue to have that 100 to 200 basis point uh, growth better than the market growth numbers, rather than specifically looking at a pointed, uh, point estimates in terms of growth uh, percentages. Uh no, but ballpark, I mean, since you're saying that health is a key focus area for the company uh, and you've done about, uh, you know, 20% uh, growth in retail health this time, is that a number that you can sustain? Can you do better than that? And overall, what are you looking at for the full year? Yeah, so let me kind of break that into each of the segments, as you rightly mentioned. So if you look at uh, health, uh, health as a segment, we have kind of grown at almost about 40%. Industry growth has been at about 20%. Now, will that trajectory continue? Honestly, for the rest of the quarters, Q1 is generally more skewed for corporate health. The rest of the quarters is relatively more kind of reflective of retail health growth numbers. There, we have seen a growth of almost about 23% for quarter one. That's something that we should definitely kind of sustain even if you look, look forward to the rest of the year on the retail health space. On the commercial lines, which kind of spans across fire, marine, engineering, liability, etc., etc. There again, if you would have seen for Q1, we have had almost a 2x growth Industry grew roughly at about 8%. We grew at almost about 17%. Now, that's been a segment where over years we have continued to kind of accrete market share. And given the increased thrust that the government is also putting on infrastructure investments, which kind of significantly aids the engineering line of business, we should definitely see the growth momentum sustaining. Having said that, one segment of the business within the commercial line space has been the fire insurance, which as we had explained even in the earlier call, from this year onwards, there has been some impact of uh, price change. So, for example, in quarter one, there has been a price drop of almost about close to 6 to 7% for the overall market. So, that segment will continue to be possibly a little tepid in terms of growth. But overall, for ICS Lombard, for the rest of the year, we should continue to see the growth percentages that we have seen for Q1. On motor, again, the trend line seems to be kind of looking quite uh, positive for us. Again, when you look at sequentially month on month between April, May and June, we have been able to see improved growth numbers. But one thing that we'll watch out for is the change in the expense of management guidelines that has come into force from this year. A lot of the players in the market are operating at a threshold which is much higher. For ICS Lombard, that expense of management is well within the threshold. Once players start to course correct their expense of management numbers, that by itself will further present op further opportunity of growth for us. Hence, for the full, of full year, I would continue to maintain that the industry should continue to grow in the range of 15 to 20 percent in that range. For ISIS Lombard, we would look for, as I said, 100 to 200 basis points over and above the market growth numbers. All right, uh, Gopal, you had given us a, a number for the industry uh, combined ratio, which has come down a little bit, which is good. For your own combined ratio was impacted because of the 35 crores uh, of the cyclone, right? Uh, going ahead, when do you see that 102 percent off that you have been telling us about in the past? So, Nigel, what we have been telling the market is, uh, I mean, we ended FI23 with a comment of roughly about 104%. We have been saying that by end of FI25 is when we would want to see that combined ratio down to about 102%. And directionally, I think uh, when we kind of see ourselves getting placed, we believe we should be able to kind of uh, achieve that. So, as of now, no particular changes to that uh, number of 102% that we have talked about to reach by end of FI25. Okay, uh, we'll leave it there, Mr. Balachandran. Uh, thank you very much and uh, hope uh, we're able to speak with you soon again, maybe in a, a few weeks' time once you have, as you said, I mean, the claims for, uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, flooding uh, which start to come in uh, and uh, that'll only happen once things actually settle down, uh, which should be a few weeks from now, hopefully. Uh, thank you very much. That's ICS Lombard uh, for you. We'll